If you're fully vaccinated and you want the world to know, you can always keep your vaccination card handy. Places like Office Depot and Staples will even laminate it for you for free. But there's another option, a wearable type of ID. Denver 7's Eric Lufer explains. Good morning. It's called Immuniband, a first of its kind wearable piece of vaccine identification. It's nothing extravagant, but it's valuable for sure. It's a wristband that has a QR code on the back that links to your vaccination card. So there's an ability to access the initial documentation. With the CDC saying it's okay for fully vaccinated people to gather, showing off that wristband is your way of saying, hey, I'm safe to be around. I talked with physician Jay Teshoff Burnton, the president of Immuniband LLC. And as we get back into the public, there's a little bit of fear. And anything we can do to make that fear less is something that helps all of us. And so this is a way to say, I've been through the vaccination process. The vaccination card that you get initially, it's free. The wristband will cost you, it's 20 bucks online. You can go to immuniband.com. That's where you'll certify that you've been fully vaccinated. You upload your card and then the immuniband will be sent to you. So there it is, another option for you if you want those around you to know you got the shot. I'm Eric Hoover, Denver 7. I don't want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, all honor, all reverence, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. All right. The Heavenly Father's true name is Yahweh. His son's true name is Yahweh Shai. Through the Holy Spirit, Bahasham, Rakak, Wadash, the Holy Spirit of truth resting upon me to do this lesson. Lord willing to be edifying to the elect, the bondage to the elders who rule well. And salutations to my fellow ministers. This is a... Uh, in yeah, response to the clip that I'm going to play or attach to the beginning of this uh, lesson, going into this band here, you know, this little, uh, they call it, so like, they call it, I think, the immuno band, <laughs> saying that, you know, uh, you can wear this band to show others that you've been, um, you've been, you know, you've been injected. <laughs> and um, you can see where this thing is going, you know, where, where, because, you know, the, uh, the uh, CDC released new guidelines saying, hey, those that have such and such such can now gather outside, not wear, have to wear a mask, etc. So they're already moving forward with um, their uh, to totalitarian uh, uh, dictatorship, man. You know, this is where the wor world is going toward, is toward going towards a, uh, a dictatorship and in, in the, uh, the liberties that uh, especially here in the West, you uh, you Americans, U.S. citizens have been so familiar with and so used to these things are going to be things of the past where only obedient uh, servants can, you know, um, get a pass and, and, and do the things that were that were once, um, you know, at your disposal and, and, and once a, uh, a luxury or not a luxury, but once a uh, you know, thing like, you know, just like going out and concert, these things that were once, you know, uh, easy to do, these things are only going to be granted, uh, uh, you're only going to be given a green light to do it by getting such things such as this immuno band and, and basically pledging your allegiance to the beast, right, bowing to the image, serving by all, all right. This is uh, Philippians chapter 3. Verse 6, it says, Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Yahweh. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Mashiach, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Yahweh. I want to look at another translation the nlt says yes everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing yahweh shah my shah my lord for his sake i have discarded everything else counted it all as garbage so that i could gain christ yeah, and that's what we're doing all right we're, we're discarding all right everything of this world so that we can gain yahweh shah my shah because the lord is on his way all right whether you believe it or not the lord will be here all right, in in the, in the coming uh, uh, near future, all right, and we don't want the uh, we don't want Yahweh Shai to be ashamed of us. All right, let's get that. All 
Uh, this is uh, Mark chapter 8, verse uh, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. All right. This is Luke chapter 14, verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. A disciple is a student or a follower. All right, you can't follow Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai if you don't hate your life, which that word hate goes into loving less. All right, so if, you, if you're if you choosing your life of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you're not fit for this. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. So... You know, coming into this faith, you're supposed to count the cost. You're supposed to look at what's on the table. All right. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven, salvation. But you have to look at it as well. OK, what comes with these things? Well, I have to de deny myself. I have to forsake uh, the things of the world and put put or as they say in the word, put God first. All right. Because when you come in this faith, you literally put God and his son first. All right. You do the things which are appealing to them. You live your life according to them. All right. Ecclesiastes 12 said. If you, uh, what it says, um, let us hear the conclusion of the matter, fear the most high and keep his commandments. And part of our commandments is men, all right, is to go out to the highways and, and byways and, you know, bring other, uh, uh, bring forth fruit, all right, give warning to the house of Israel, all right, condemn the wicked and prophesy the Lord's coming, right? And there, there's more things, right? And we've also counted the cost of losing everything, all right? Forsaking our loved ones, losing losing our uh, losing our wives, losing children, losing jobs, right? Many brothers have lost jobs behind his faith. You know, that's all a part of counting the cost. You say, oh, well, shit, that's that's what, a hey, and the scripture says that the things written for time are for our learning. So we read about, especially Paul, you know, he he's lost it all. You know, he, he lost a lot of things. You know, even Peter in, in, in St. Matthew, the 19th chapter, asked him, said, we, we, we forsaken all, what should we gain? So we look at the followers of Yahweh Shai, man, that's, this is a part of the program, which is a good thing. This, this lets you know that, you know, we're, we're actually, you know, we're, we're, we're walking the right path. You know, scripture says, I showed you the path, walk ye in it, right? So this is how we know we're walking the right path if, if we're losing stuff, all right? Because we're, we're seeking to gain Yahweh Shai, not gain all right, this world, the hell with this world. You know, this is um, Matthew 16, verse. Oh, now it's acting up. See that shit? Fuck it. We'll get it. Uh, we'll get it here. It's all good. Matthew 16, verse 25. And it reads, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. All right. And, and real soon, a lot of people are about to try to save their life. They're about to try to preserve, you know, what, what bit of their life they have. I was just watching a video of Stephanie McMahon on my timeline because, uh, you know, I'm subscribed to WWE. You know, I grew up watching wrestling. Stephanie McMahon, which is uh, the daughter of the owner of the WWE. She was on video getting her, uh, you know, getting her her, her shot, and um, she was saying, "One step closer, you know, to to gaining back all the things that I missed the last twelve months." See, that's that's her trying to save her life, and, and the heathen, the hell with them, they don't have anything but this world anyway. But see, the Israelites, the Lord is promising us something much more than what this world can give us, right? And you're gonna have a lot of our people that are trying, they're gonna try to save their life here, man. And they're gonna end up losing it. It says, uh, verse 26, for where a man where does a man profit it if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Because in order to gain this world, you have to lose your soul here. You have to compromise yourself, compromise your integrity, compromise your belief. Right? It says, and lose his own soul, and which or what shall a man give in exchange for his uh, for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. 
I'm going to read that last verse. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. All right, going into today, you have you have uh, the elect that are that are here today. Many of the elect here, uh, outside of the martyrs, they're, they're not going to die. You know, they're going to actually see the Lord make his second coming. They're going to get beamed up into the cherries and then come back down after they're changed. And, and Babylon is destroyed. And they're going to be upgraded, you know, never having a taste of death in this lifetime. So, you know, that's something to look forward to. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be of that number, right? This is Revelation 3, verse 10. It says, because thou, yes, yeah, acting up now, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon earth. All right. And, um. You know, this thing is about to be tempted because a lot of people or well, everyone's uh, faith, you know, and belief is going to be tested. All right. Because here it is. You have Esau basically uh, uh, bringing uh, Satan's kingdom on earth. Right. And it's going to, you know, look like there's no other way. All right. But you have to know, trust and believe that, hey, the Lord going to come through, man. He going he gonna to make a way. And, you know, in an hour, an hour is a time period, right? And we know that the Lord deals with, with measures. He deals with, with time, with period, with, you know, with, with, with ages, with periods, with time, with measure. It tells you in second or just the fourth chapter. Let me get that real quick. Because even the Lord had his, um, his hour of temptation, right? Second Edges 4 and 37, it says, uh, by measure have he measured the times and by number have he numbered the times and he doeth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. So the Lord, you know, is, is in complete control of everything that goes on on this earth, man. And he has everything according to its time and its purpose of his purpose rather. Okay. So the hour of temptation, that's going to be a measure that's going to hit. Everyone is going to be going to have their own measure of their temptation in, in their own trial period, which, you know, trying and testing are synonymous with each other. But this is going to be a worldwide thing. Like verse 11, it says, behold, I come quickly. Hold, and that's why things are moving so fast because the Lord is about to come and, and, and the days are speeding up. You know, prophecy is moving, you know, very quickly. Things are happening. There's a lot of things happening with the news. And that's because the Lord is coming quickly. You know, he says, hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown all right which what we have is this truth all right him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my power and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god see going into what i mentioned earlier about once the elect get beamed up and they come back down and i will write upon him my new name all right this is matthew 7 and 13 because, you know, basically this is the straight gate that we're about to have to go through. Because the Lord himself, him being an example, matter of fact, let's get that. I think, yeah, that's in John. Yeah, this is it. First Peter 2 and 21, it says, For here, for even hereunto were ye called, because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. You see, so he already laid the path. He already showed us, you know, the way to walk. He showed us that what we, what we would have to go through, right? Temptation, trial, persecution. So, yeah. Matthew 7 and 13, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The scripture says in Exodus 23rd uh, chapter, I believe it says, follow not the multitude to do evil. All right, because the multitude, all right, are going to be, they're going to perish. All right, the second Exodus 9 chapter says, you know, the, the multitude uh, were, were created in vain. He said, let the multitude perish, for they were born in vain. All right? The, the Yahweh Shemel Shane dealing with the multitude. He ain't dealing with the masses. All right? 
wide is going to be that path but see the the elect they're going to go through the, the straight gate which is that difficult path because it's difficult walking this righteous path in such a wicked world man you see it says that lead to destruction and many there be which go in thereat verse 14 because there is because straight is the gate straight meaning path of difficulty is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be to find it so this is a blessing you know, being called amongst the few, few, you know, as compared to the world, being called into this, this, this faith, man, this truth, this walk, all right, because we're walking the way that's going to lead to life, all right, and and we're 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 building ourselves up, you know, the spirit is building us up, you know, to have to, to walk through this thing and and, and get the victory. All right, because it tells you in uh, Revelation 12 and 10 that what? Uh, verse 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. It overcame who? The wicked one. All right, the, the, one, the ones that are in power, which, is, which are the Edomites. All right, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The Lord said, hold that fast which thou have, right? This, this testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death, you see? So we don't love our lives anyway. So part of counting the cost is like, man, shit. Well, well, say if I forsake this truth, what am I going to go back to in the world? My career? <laughs> of having a family? No. You know, this is it, man. They See, the elites are ready to move forward with their wicked agenda because it tell you in this same chapter, the next verse what it tells you at the end it says for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time his time is short and he knows that why because it says it in the scripture so at some point the lord would have it to where those that in power would say damn you know we ain't got much time we got to hurry this thing up and as we can see we're in that time now where things are speeding up and the video that's going to be attached to this uh to this to this lesson is, is a prime example of that man all right, separation is coming. So go ahead and gird your mind up to separate from everything that you, you know, hold valuable in this world so, and, and, and prepare yourself to lose these things so that you can gain Yahweh Shem Yahweh which is life. All right, Lord willing, this was out of fun. Shalom.